discuss one very interesting topic accounts of company as i always say students the last three chapters according to me are very important for exam because most of the times questions are from those units only and you can expect one or two questions from these three units case based question theory mcq case based mcq anything can be asked now in accounts of companies we are going to discuss what are books of accounts how are they to be maintained for the for how many years are they to be maintained uh, can we order reopening of the books what is nfra what are the other documents that the company needs to maintain so everything related to accounts books other papers documents is covered under this chapter so accounts of company i have a small table for you it covers most of the basic concepts what what to what does a company uh, need to maintain company shall prepare books of accounts books of accounts will include books and records maintained for the uh, goods sold goods purchased cash received cash paid uh, records of asset liability these are the books that the company will maintain company will also maintain other books papers documents vouchers other supporting documents financial statements yes the company shall maintain financial statement now that we are on the topic let us understand what is included in financial statement now financial statement is discussed under section 2 clause 40 this is important from the definition point of view sometimes a two mark question is asked define financial statement so financial statement will include profit and loss account or income and expenditure account as the case may be depending on the type of company whether it is profitable or non profit organization it includes balance sheet cash flow statement statement of changes in equity any explanatory note but if you are a are a, a one person company small company dormant company private company which is a startup then it may not include cash flow statement so that is one small privilege given to small company and one person company dormant company otherwise the financial statements of all other companies will include profit and loss income and expenditure balance sheet cash flow statement uh, notes to accounts and statement of changes in equity why is cash flow exempt because it's a very tedious task to prepare the cash flow statement and sometimes uh, uh, they don't have so many transactions okay these dormant companies and small companies may not have in, may not have many transactions so yes there is a small exemption to them maintenance of books of accounts they will be kept at the registered office of the company so books shall be prepared they shall be kept at the registered office of the company or the board of directors may keep it at any other place that they decide it's only thing that you should inform the roc within 7 days that uh, this is the place where we have kept the books of accounts so you can keep it at any other place in india that the board of directors may decide within 7 days just inform the roc what is the time period for which you should preserve the books the book should be prepared preserved for a period of 8 years but what if my business is only 4 years old then in that case you need to preserve the books for all the 4 years inspection who can inspect these books documents other papers the books documents etc can be inspected by the directors they are open for inspection by directors only however certain other persons like registrar of companies authorized officer of the central government or officers of sfio that is special fraud investigation office they can also inspect now under what circumstances will they inspect see maybe they are suspicious or they have received uh, some kind of intimation from the other person that these accounts need to be inspected yes in that case if we if they are doubtful as to the credibility of the account then they may inspect so registrar can inspect authorized officer of the central government or officer of sfio in case of failure to comply comply with these provisions you will be subject to penalty of 50000 to 5 lakhs so students here we have also covered all the penalties so that it is it is easy for you to remember them reopening of books of accounts on courts or tribunals order sometimes when we feel that the transactions are fraudulent see i have mentioned it over here why will you uh, uh, ask for reopening of the books see under normal circumstances once the books are closed they are approved uh by the uh, board then they are also approved by the shareholders in the general meeting then in, after that you will not make any changes to the books of accounts or the financial statements but if there is uh, if we feel that the accounts are prepared in a fraudulent manner so this is the keyword if you feel that the accounts are prepared in a fraudulent manner and if you feel that the affairs of the company are mismanaged thus casting a doubt on the credibility of the financial statements 
you cannot rely on the financial statements then in that case you may ask the company to reopen the books recast the books the court or tribunal may pass an order in case an application is made to it either by the central government income tax authority sebi any other statutory regulatory authority or any other person so if they request then yes we may reopen the books the they will apply to the court or the tribunal and they, the tribunal will ask the company to reopen recast the book to make the corrections what are the reasons we have mentioned over here they will the court or the tribunal will pass an order if they feel that the accounts were prepared in a fraudulent manner affairs were mismanaged thus casting a doubt on the uh, financial statements notice will be served to the applicants applicants in this case are the central government income tax authority sebi any other statutory body notice will be served to the applicants in case they have any representations we will take that into consideration and then pass an order to either revise or reconsider the accounts the account so revised or recast reconsidered shall be final so the revised or recast accounts shall be considered to be final all right let us proceed maintenance of books accounts and other documents in electronic form this is important because of the amendment now we can maintain books records in either physical form or electronic form and in case you are maintaining the records in electronic form then you need to consider the following uh, it is optional and permitted see small organizations they still prefer to maintain the books in the physical form but a bigger organization yes they would like to shift to the electronic medium so it is optional it is not yet compulsory it is optional it is permitted but these records should remain accessible in india it should be that the servers should be maintained in india and the the records which we are maintaining should be in a legible form it should be in the same form that you are entering data it should not be that you have entered data in a particular format but the output that you get in is is in a format or a language that is not uh, comprehensible this is an important point because it is an amendment you can use the accounting software providing an audit trail edit log of every change you may use whatever accounting software that you are comfortable with like tally erp or you may have your specialized software designed for your kind of business but whatever electronic software that you are using must provide an audit trail audit trail means you should be able to trace the entry uh, right from the beginning till the end uh, the person who has entered the details in case it has been altered then who is the person who has altered it who has made the changes who has authorized those changes Uh, so we should be able to keep a step by step record of every entry that is made in those account in that accounting system so you should be able to trace it from the first step till the last step in case there is any change in case you are making any uh, any edit in any particular entry then who has initiated the change what is the change made and who has authorized the change all those details should be mentioned it must remain in the original or similar format so it is okay that if you enter data in a particular format and you get it in a tabular form or a graphic form if if it is in, if the outcome is in a better format then that is totally acceptable like you are entering basic data and you are getting it in a report format that is fine but it should be in a similar format it must remain complete and unaltered yes it should be displayed in legible form legible means a form which is understandable it must uh, be such that there is a proper system for storage retrieval display print out of electronic records so you must be able to maintain retrieve the records and you should be also able to take a print out of the record maintain periodic backup generally backup is not maintained at the place where the data is kept it is to, it is to be maintained at some other place in organizations normally on weekends the it department will take backup so i remember when i was working uh the it department would ask us to keep the files in a common folder and uh, that folder would be backed up okay so every periodic uh, uh, every weekend they would take backup of the data in case a question is asked in the exam you are expected to write all these points so highlight them and mark them as important for exam next we have approval and signing of financial statement so we know what is included in the definition of financial statement what is considered as a financial statement now who will sign and uh, how will the financial statements be prepared so let us first i think we should discuss the financial statements should give a true and fair view these are the keywords so i'll i'll highlight the keywords which will be present in your answer they should give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company they should comply with the accounting standards now what is a true and fair view 
आई ऑलवेज से दैट ट्रू एंड फेयर व्यू मीन्स जो लिखना चाहिए था वो लिखा है जैसे लिखना चाहिए था वैसे लिखा है इट मीन्स वॉट एवर शुड बी रिटर्न इज इज रिटर्न सो ऑल द मटीरियल इंपॉर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन इज प्रोवाइडेड इट इज कंप्लीट इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट एंड जैसा लिखना चाहिए था वैसा लिखा है इट मीन्स आफ्टर फॉलोइंग ऑल द अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स so it should give a true and fair view it should comply with the accounting standards it should be in a form as provided for different classes of company in schedule 3 schedule 3 will give you the format of preparing the profit and loss account and balance sheet so it should be in that format only these are few other points that you should keep in mind while preparing the financial statement at each annual general meeting okay so this is something which will be considered in every annual general meeting it's an ordinary business considering the financial statements yes board's report so the at each agm the board of directors they shall lay the financial statements for the financial year if the company has subsidiary or associates then yes we will also prepare consolidated financial statements in the same form as the original statements are maintained they will also be laid before the annual general meeting in case the financial statements do not comply with the accounting standards deviation along with reasons for the deviation and what is the financial impact of the deviation shall be disclosed now one very important requirement is that the financial statements should comply with the accounting standards and if they do not then in in the financial statement you have to men mention the deviation like uh, we are not following this uh, particular accounting standard and this is the financial impact whether profit has increased or decreased due to that deviation that should also be disclosed in the financial statement so in case a question is asked on define financial statement and state the characteristics or features then you can write whatever you see on the screen see this the uh, definition will be mentioned along with section number you need to write this note also on which i have marked a star then uh, financial statements shall you will write that signing you need not include unless they specifically ask you to approval and signing of financial statements can be asked as a case based question generally it's asked as a case based question section 134 financial statements including the consolidated financial statements shall be first approved by the board and it shall be signed on behalf of the board by chairperson if the company has authorized the chairperson if the board has authorized the chairperson or if there is no chairperson or if he is not authorized by the board then by two directors and out of this one will be a managing director in case the company has a managing director so the consolidated financial statements as well as the stand alone financial statements shall be signed by the chairperson but only if he is authorized by the board and if he is not so authorized then it will be signed by two directors out of which one will be managing director if any it will also be signed by the ceo cfo company secretary if they are appointed in case of opc it shall be signed by one director because yes minimum we need only one director so even if one director signs it is allowed signed statements shall be submitted to the auditor the auditor will submit his finance his audit report as well as the financial statements to the members of the company for consideration in the annual general meeting so you need to remember all this and it is easily uh, possible through the charts yes i have written everything in step format it making it very easy for you to remember the points guys i hope you are enjoying uh, studying from the chart book if you have not yet purchased the chart book then do visit my website theorymasterslearning.com copy of your chart book is waiting for you all right next let us discuss nfra important for short note that is national financial reporting authority because of the loopholes in the companies act there were many frauds or scams that took place in the past and most of them uh, uh, could be blamed on the auditor as well there were cases wherein the auditor colluded with the management and they carried on those unethical activities so after that the government as well as ICA I became very stringent and they introduced a special authority that is the national financial reporting authority what is the power of nfra what are the duties rights of nfra composition of nfra that is also something which can be asked in the exam so aim was to enforce okay, to introduce and ensure that it is followed monitor what compliance of auditing and accounting standards so these are the auditing and accounting standards that you need to that you need to follow while preparing the accounts and the auditor will have to ensure that the accounting standards are properly complied with by the company they need to follow the auditing standards while verifying while checking the books of accounts so nfra they only recommend these accounting standards they are actually enforced by the central government so the job of recommendation is done by nfra they have tried to make it stringent slightly strict okay they have increased the responsibility of an auditor 
द फंक्शन ऑफ एन एफ आर ए इट इज ये लेट एस हाईलाइट द की वर्ड्स चेंज द इंक it is to make recommendations to the central government so nfra will only recommend finally enforcement will be by the central government on formulation and laying down of accounting and auditing standards so they only recommend then they will monitor and enforce the compliance with accounting and auditing standards they will ensure that the auditing and accounting standards are followed by the auditing professional they will also oversee the quality these words should be present in your answer they will oversee the quality so uh, how will you ensure that the quality of professionals is maintained by ensuring that they attend uh, training programs in case there is any amendment in the act so we organize seminars or some training program uh, wherein they can attend and uh, update their knowledge so even icai has uh, introduced compulsory training hours for uh, chartered accountants who are in practice so every year they have to attend minimum uh, 20 hours of uh, training and uh, updating their knowledge so that is uh, something the quality of professional is something which is uh, ensured by nfra so in case a question is asked on functions here are three functions which you will mention powers of nfra to investigate into the matters of professional or other misconduct committed by member or firm of chartered accountant so apart from the ic from icai even nfra can initiate action they will exercise the same power as it is vested in the civil code civil code means that they can blame you for damages caused by your conduct as an auditor so any authority person that uh, has suffered damages because of your wrongful statement or report yes then nfra will impose penalty on the individual they will be forced to pay damages on the individual or the firm of auditors they will impose penalty for proved professional and other misconducts even icai takes very strict action they may suspend you they may debar you from undertaking audits they may penalize you sometimes they may even cancel your membership so very strict actions are taken in case we find some kind of professional proved professional misconduct by chartered accountants so that is nfra next we have the board's report see the board's report you can write down it forms part of annual report okay the board's report forms part of the annual report board's report is a way of communicating with the shareholders see shareholders give us money okay they provide us their hard earned money in the form of capital so and the board of directors manage that money so at the end of the year board of directors they feel responsible to the shareholders so they report uh, as to how the company is managed what is what is the profitability of the company what is the dividend that they are recommending okay the the dividend is recommended the final dividend is recommended by the board of directors through their board's report and it will be declared by the uh, shareholders in the annual general meeting so this is a way of communicating the overall financial position operation the scope of business so let me write it over here they want to explain it uh, through the board's report the overall financial position operation and business scope okay so what is actually included in the board's report what are the contents of the board report it will contain web address if any where the annual return as we are discussed in section 92 has been placed the url will be given you if you are viewing the soft copy of the board report just click on that and it will be directed it will direct you to the annual report number of board meetings that were held in a year so along with the date the number of directors who had attended the meeting directors responsibility report details of fraud reported by auditors so in case frauds are reported by the auditors the board of directors will give a reply as to what action have they taken against this fraud so it means that the audit report will be submitted before the board's report the date of the audit report will be before the date of the board's report comments by the board on remarks made by auditor so whether uh, the auditor has given a qualified report or an adverse report or um, uh, you know what are the comments given uh, in the audit report a reply to that will be given by the board of directors through their report again it it simplifies it it signifies that the audit report will be submitted before the board's report 
company's policy on the director's appointment and the remuneration what is the company's policy how do they select uh, is a nomination and remuneration committee in existence which suggests the name of the directors uh, that can be you know persons who can be appointed as a director so what is uh, how do you appoint the director uh, what are the criteria like do you see the qualification and uh, the the uh, the companies in which he is a director so all that will be mentioned over there particulars of contracts of arrangement with related parties material changes affecting the financial position so in case there are certain material changes which are affecting the financial position they may have taken taken place after the closing of the financials so maybe they want to highlight it they want to discuss that there are certain certain achievements which they want to bring it out to the uh, shareholders conservation of energy technology absorption uh develop and foreign exchange development implementation of risk management csr policy and initiatives where they are spending what are the initiatives they are taking for csr what are the new businesses that they have launched uh, are the board meetings conducted on time are there any other grievances and how have they addressed so it is a communication by the directors they are communicating with the shareholders then we have the corporate governance report corporate governance means the manner in which a company is governed good governance implies that you have policies in place you have no more number of independent directors on your board you have a code of ethics you have a whistle blower policy so there are certain things which may be employees comfortable the shareholders comfortable so how are you managing the company to the best of your ability it aims to improve the company's image efficiency effectiveness and social responsibility so taking care of the employees their welfare their family csr initiatives uh, all these and you are caring for the environment these are good governance company's code of governance board of directors the composition will be discussed over your audit committee and other committees their formation will be discussed their members will be pointed out meetings held in the year the annual general meeting board of directors meeting when was the other meetings held the resolutions that were passed and we will also mention the date of the uh, uh, meetings people who had attended the board meeting materially significant related party transactions non compliance by the company if any date of book closure it will be for declaration of dividend dividend payment date market price plant location and many other things okay so this is something these are the 10 points which you can remember from exam purpose otherwise there is a lot of other data also which is mentioned in the corporate governance report again this also forms part of the annual report then we have corporate social responsibility i'm not covering it over here because it is a very vast topic there is a qr code you can scan that i will also leave a link of corporate social responsibility i have covered the amendments as well as the explanation in that video please go and watch that video it covers csr extensively last we have section 138 internal audit now what is the work of an internal auditor and how is it different from statutory auditor see statutory auditor only goes to the books of uh, financial statements to determine whether the financial statements show a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company or not they don't do an in depth analysis of the systems uh, they don't do an in depth analysis of any particular procedure all that work is done by the internal auditor internal auditor and statutory auditor they are two separate persons statutory audit cannot conduct internal audit of the same company now internal auditor does an in depth analysis of uh, the systems basically like when i had joined the corporate i was working in the internal audit department only uh, you go deep into the system and you try to find out the loopholes so you pick up any process in the company try to understand the process try to understand how the data moves in that process what are the loopholes or the possible uh, uh, frauds that can take place and you try to address those loopholes you prepare a report discuss it with the management make changes submit this report to the statute the auditor and if he feels uh, he can incorporate few points in his statutory report who can be appointed as internal auditor so a chartered accountant a cost accountant or any other professional as decided by the board can be appointed as the internal auditor of the company he may or may not be an employee uh, you can have your own internal audit department in and in apart from that you can also get it audit the internal audit conducted by an external uh internal auditor external internal means someone who comes from outside and your internal audit department is working continuously uh in the organization so a chartered accountant cost accountant may or may not be in practice 
may or may not be employee of the company can be an internal auditor listed companies have to compulsorily get internal audit done unlisted company will get the internal audit done only when their outstanding deposit is 25 crores or more during any time in the previous financial year or the word is or so these are not cumulative these are alternative requirements paid up share capital is 50 crores or more outstanding loans from the banks public financial institution exceeds 100 crore or more turnover exceeds 200 crore or more during the previous financial year see i have done it in i have written it in sequence so we start with 25 crores double it 50 crores double that 100 crores double it 200 crores so these are the limits that you need to memorize they will ask you whether the uh, they will give you a particular company they will mention the paid up capital turnover and you have to decide whether the company needs to conduct an internal audit or not in case of a private company okay in case of a private company if the outstanding loans and borrowings from banks or other public financial institution exceeds 100 crore or more turnover exceeds 200 crore or more if either of these conditions are satisfied the company has to get the audit internal audit done so students these are the requirements you have to memorize this uh, internal auditor yes as i discussed he does an in-depth analysis of the uh, systems of the processes tries to find out the loopholes who can be appointed as an internal auditor that we have already discussed and with this we come to an end of the accounts of company i have tried to cover all the important concepts over here next we will discuss audit and auditors i love the chapter i love the charts that we have prepared so let's study audit and auditors